So tonight I'm looking at the Solstice Pod by Immersive. I really wish that they'd put a little bit more effort into their marketing because this is an awesome device. So I've got one uh, connected to my network uh, at this address here. And when you go to that in a browser, it brings up this page by default here. And uh, if you click the big connect button in the middle there, it'll serve up the correct client for your platform. Uh, if you're using an iPhone or an iPad, uh, you're just going to use AirPlay mirroring. Uh, if you're using an Android device, a Windows computer or a uh, Mac computer, uh, you need to install the client. And once you have that installed, uh, you can just go ahead and connect. Uh, one of the things that there was just no information about online, which is sort of baffling, is the configuration for the uh, Solstice pod. Uh, down in the lower left-hand corner, we have the configuration page. On the first tab here, you can give it a name. Uh, you can customize uh, what's shown on the screen a little bit there. You can uh, change your background, which would be awesome if you were setting up a, a logo on there so that people know which institution this device belongs to when they enter, uh, whether it's a meeting space or a classroom. Uh, under Access Control, uh, you can set it to where it's uh, default by open, uh, has a screen key that you need to type in to connect, uh, has one shared password, uh, or is moderated. Uh, that's where one person controls uh, what's being displayed on the screen and who can connect. Uh, or you can have it set to determine at runtime where you can set that in the client. Uh, you can set a password here if you wanted to. Um, and then you also have uh, some security options. Uh, you can lock it down to where only certain uh, connection methods are allowed. Um, the maximum number of connections can also be set here. Uh, since I'm using the small group edition, that's limited to four. And then you can also set the, uh, the time zone. Uh, the next tab here is a really interesting one. It's network. Um, so for the Ethernet port, because this has both uh, Ethernet and wireless uh, radio in it, uh, you can um, disable or enable Ethernet. Uh, you can set a static IP if you wanted to. Uh, for your wireless, you could enable or disable that. What's really cool here, I think, is that you can have it run as an access point and share connection to your, uh, your existing network. Um, if you wanted to, you could attach it to an existing wireless network and you can set uh, WPA uh, can, uh, security if you want to. Um, this is where you would enter the network name that is presented. And since this is enabled by default and says Solstice Pod, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up the list of wireless networks here um, near my computer. And once this does its dance and refreshes, uh, there's a Solstice Pod available as an open access point to connect to since I don't have a uh, any uh, security key set. Scrolling down a little bit further here, under the firewall settings, you can allow uh, just port 80 and 443 to connect through. So that's uh, your standard web traffic, uh, either unencrypted or SSL. Or you can black block all traffic between the wired and wireless networks. Uh, if you have a proxy on your network, you can set that here. And then the uh, the base port, you can change that. I don't think there's a whole lot of need to change it on the, uh, on the pod here. Scrolling back up to the top under tools, we have uh, the option to download a client, um, set auto connect, um, reboot, and then under the licensing tab, you can uh, check out what's going on there with the licensing for the device. Uh, what's really cool about this, I think, uh, and it took a little bit to find out that this was even an option, is the Solstice dashboard. Um, you can download the latest version if you just search for it, pretty easy to find or open up the reference guide. Uh, you'll probably want to read this through uh, cover to cover because it's pretty interesting and it's not very long. So if I open up the Solstice client here, I'm already connected because for some reason Camtasia and uh, the Solstice uh, screen capture uh, fight a little bit. Uh, so I went ahead and uh, got this connected and then um, launched Camtasia. So I'm gonna try and uh, share my entire desktop and see if it wigs out. Nope, that worked perfectly. Uh, what's really cool here is you can share either your desktop, which is what I have elected to do, or just a window or a media file, uh, whether that's a, a video or a picture. Uh, one of the really cool things, I think, is this, uh, this control section here. So if I had multiple things connected, you can adjust them. Uh, just so I have something to really show here, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, my iPhone and do AirPlay mirroring to the uh, Solstice pod here. And so now, 
you can see that my phone is connected as well as the desktop. And uh, in the video I show of the TV here in a little bit, it will um, have both of them up there side by side, and it is pretty cool. Um, if I were to move this window around, uh, it would move on the screen. Uh, same for the icons on the home screen of my, my iPhone here. Um, under the settings, there's a couple of really cool things here. How I'd mentioned that you could uh, set the um, session control, whether that would be um, open or a screen key or uh, moderated, uh, that can be done here. Um, you can rename your client. Uh, the first time you connect, it will ask you to give it a name. Uh, since I'd already connected, we just skipped that step. And you can also see the version number in the about here. It's really not a whole lot to it, but uh, it's just intuitive. It's, it's really cool, I think. Um, from the client here, you can uh, move things around. Uh, so I hid the video stream from my iPhone off to the side here. It's just sort of on deck waiting to be pulled back up. And I can swap, swap that out here when it's time to show the video source from my phone. And just to really, really show what this can do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pop out and uh, show a wider view uh, from my camera. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and uh, show what this really looks like in action. So from my surface here, I'm going to go ahead and connect and mirror my desktop. And so now I've got the control app open here. I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, Make that a little bit bigger so it's easier to manipulate. And then from my old laptop here, just a crappy lappy i3 M380, going to go ahead and connect that and share the desktop. The reason I'm using this as well is uh, it's one of the slower uh, Intel i3 processors. And if it can keep up with it without having too crazy of a CPU load, uh, it really shows that a lot of uh, a lot of devices are going to work just fine. And so now that I've got two desktops up here, well, that's great, but we also need to pull in mobile here. So from my iPhone, I'm going to go ahead and turn on screen mirroring. So now I've got three devices up here. And then from an Android tablet, I'm just going to go ahead and connect and go ahead and enable uh, screen mirroring on that as well. And change the rotation on it so it's a little bit bigger. Do the same on my phone just to show that uh, it updates and moves things around uh, as is uh, reasonable. Let's just go ahead and open uh, Safari here. Hopefully I don't have anything too embarrassing in there. And it's not that sideways. Everything uh, scales to fit as it should. Going back and forth with the uh, the mobile devices they update as they can to make things uh, correct. So portrait, landscape, that all auto scales. From the control in the uh, Solstice client here, uh, if I were to drag these devices off, I can sort of stick them off in the side for holding until we're ready for them. And if I've only got one device up here, it sort of goes full screen. Uh, so if I drag that off to the side there to where I have everything off to the side, it's just a blank screen in the middle there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring the Android back, and it goes full screen, you know, as well it should. Um, again, with the uh, device rotation, everything just updates and it works as well as it should. Uh, if I bring multiple devices back on, you know, whether I'm going to, you know, compare iOS and Android something side by side. Uh, you just bring it up here and everything looks pretty much like it should. Um, that's really what it is, is everything just works and it works well. That's, that's just really neat. It's so one of the really cool things I think about the, um, the Solstice product is the centralized management that you get with the Solstice dashboard. Um, and it really is just as simple as either importing, uh, entering an IP address, or hitting discover in my case since uh, I'm on the same network. And so once you have your device selected, I'm just going to go ahead and full screen this real quick, is you can manage everything that you can through the web interface plus quite a bit more. 
um, all of the options that were there in the web interface are available here um, under the first few tabs. And uh, any of the options you could change there, you can change here. But in addition to that, you've also got the ability to send messages to the Solstice devices. You can see the activity, what the current status of it is, uh, whether or not it's being used, um, uh, how many people are connected, how much bandwidth it's using. You can make sure that your licensing is uh, correct and everything is available.